The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Hey, Mary Meet everybody, and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. Tonight we're going to be talking about Dominican voodoo with my guest, high priest, psychic medium, and spiritual worker, Hector Salva. Now, he was born and raised in a family of brujos and practiced 21 divisions, um, sensei, I think, I hope I pronounced it right, and Puerto Rican espiritismo, um, and started training as a brujo in 1989. Um, he was initiated in his family lineages in 2003. And in addition to his strong presence, he teaches workshops domestically and internationally. And he's here tonight to talk about his book, 21 Divisions, Mysteries and Magic of Dominican Voodoo. Hector, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Marla. I learned a lot reading your book. And I'm I'm admitting it wasn't painful either. Um, (laughs) I mean that you know that that's the beauty of it having people on and and talking about things that I don't know about or maybe the audience doesn't know about um and and I I think I guess I'll start off at the beginning can you share a bit of history about the 21 divisions to get us started Certainly so the 21 divisions is a tradition uh, a spiritual tradition that has a shamanic as well as witchcraft within it And the way that it all began was as Christopher Columbus came over to this side, he hit upon the island of Hispaniola, which is now Santo Domingo or the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. And in that whole time period, the Spanish came with Catholicism, but there was native Indians which we call Taino, that inhabited the islands as well. And eventually, through slavery, slaves were brought as well onto the island. All the spiritual, mystical, shamanic practices of these various groups of people came together in a form and formed what we now call the 21 Divisions or Dominican Voodoo. So throughout time from that, basically the lineages started to be practiced and Mm -hmm. passed down from master to student and master to student. Voodoo was the practices that came from the African slaves, which had their deities back in Africa and their magical spiritual practices. Those practices combined with the native practices of those on the island, along with Catholicism, because Catholicism was the state religion or the religion of the Spaniards that was imposed upon basically all of their cultures. So these three influences became kind of like the foundation, although other influences are also found in Dominican voodoo. These became the foundation and mixed together to create this form of shamanic witchcraft, which has served to basically assist people in healing, reaching, you know, the divine and enlightenment, but also in 
resolving lots of life problems and lots of life issues. For a long time, our practices were remained underground because they were seen as being savage or barbaric or backwards in terms of society. So for the longest time, our traditions were secret and kind of underground. You had to kind of know someone to know someone. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, we are now in 2020. Lots of things are starting to be opened up and discovered. And I came to write this book upon the direction of the misterios, which are the spirits that we work with and deal with. Um, to give a foundation to our tradition that a lot of people who are trying to find us kind of like we're so underground, it can be kind of hard to find things when they're underground. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I think it's better, though, but I'll, I'll stay off my soapbox right now. Um, <laughs> I've got a question from the chat room. Um, she says, 21 divisions, does that denote rank, for want of a better word, or does it mean something else? No, the 21 divisions refer to the 21 groups of spirits that were the foundation. Now, we have way more than 21 groups. However, those 21 groups formed the foundation because they were of 21 different tribes or groups of people and those 21 spiritual practices that came together. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I think a lot of people, when they hear the word voodoo, um, they immediately think of gri-gri bags or voodoo dolls and, and, you know, like witchcraft. It's also often portrayed in popular culture and in the media as dark and sinister. Um, why do you think voodoo in general gets such a scary rap? The honest reason is simply because of racism. Because mm -hmm. basically a lot of things that are... Uh, connected popularly with voodoo actually either have a very small role or in some cases almost no role whatsoever in our work and racism has always been a major influence in all sectors of the world but racism against African and native forms of spirituality they didn't understand it. People didn't. I think it was something new and they'd freak out. But you would think over time because, I mean, I um, I knew um, someone in Louisiana. He was a, a voodoo priest. He, he was white, but he, he was very well known in, in New Orleans. And it was my first interview with anybody talking about voodoo at all. And, and he was very soft-spoken. You know, I didn't expect that. Um, you know, he, he had a very nice, very calm voice. And he, he taught so much. And it, he really took the onus off of that, you know, that word. And, and by the time we were done with the show, people were like, oh, wow. It's not anything nearly what we thought it was going to be. So, yeah, but popular culture keeps it, you know. Like with witches, too. You know, we're always going to be the bad guys. Well, it's not going to sell, right? <laughs> if we told the truth, it's just not that, it's not, it doesn't sell. It doesn't sizzle, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. it, and it's the sizzle that sells the steak. So, <laughs> you know, it's not going to sizzle because if people really find out about voodoo, right, or voodoo, what they're going to find out is that our tradition is about healing, yeah. And it's about healing your ancestral stuff. It's about healing yourself. It's about you being able to reach enlightenment, which means you reaching happiness and reaching the divine for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's about healing relationships in your life, healing your relationship to money, healing situations and problems like physical healing, but also like helping people get jobs and, you know, helping people get out of jail and, like, helping people who have a sick child where no doctor has been able to cure them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I heard of, like, you know, at some time they had a, a channel at one point and then a whole newscast where the whole news show was all about everything positive that happens throughout the course of that day. Now, mm -hmm. people don't want to hear that, so that eventually was taken off the air just because it didn't have the ratings nor the viewership that you would think. 
gee, love and light doesn't get very far, does it? <laughs> uh, no, really, it yeah. actually doesn't, okay? <laughs> um, it's not as attractive to the human and as drama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody just in chat room, Taz, she said she's sure that your tradition is very beautiful. This is good. All right. Um, now, okay, so we you were already talking about it being an oral tradition, like many are, and in order to preserve the tradition and its practices, its priests and priestesses um, came together, creating, like you said, secret groups, hand down the secrets, um, you know, the knowledge and, and the manner of practice and rituals and all that stuff. And I'm sure, I mean, you know, we do that in witchcraft too, but I'm sure that there are variances between families and these traditions that get passed down, just like family recipes, you know, they get altered uh, as it goes, you know, you have to add a little more salt here, a little more pimienta over there. Um, and, and the times too, I mean, things that all that information from maybe two, three, four hundred years ago um, may be upgraded. Maybe people like, you know, the new age kind of stuff, but to keeping with those traditions. So that was a really long introduction to a question. Um, so, so how difficult was it? to put these oral traditions into writing for you? I mean, are there there are certain basics that you followed and, and you just kind of pick and chose uh, your path? Or, or, you know, you can't please everybody, but, so how, but apparently you're doing a good job. So how did you manage? So basically we do. We have variances. I call them regional variances because our, our changes do happen regionally. So, like, throughout the island in various regions, there are changes, and it's almost like each region has its own flavor, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own way to cook the chili. So, what I did was really simple, is I boiled it down to that which doesn't vary. Mm. That which which makes us all actually practicing the same thing. Right, mm-hmm. that which is foundational, no matter where you're at, in order to make chili, there are certain ingredients that you need. Right, and then I let it be known that there are certain parts of it that were specific to my lineage, and also in the book, I make I do a kind of a bit there about the fact that it is an oral tradition. There are regional variances. And some of these things happen to be from my region and Mm -hmm. not just across the board. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess sticking to the basics is good because then everybody, you know, when they get a new recipe, they add their own little touches to it. But the bottom line is the same. You know, the basic is the same. You need to make the roux. You need to, you know, put in certain ingredients that work and then then you go. So, okay. That made it simple because I was sitting there thinking, oh my God, you know, with all these different things, how did he manage to get them all down into one book? So, this is good. All right. So, you, you said that practitioners of the 21 divisions, as with most Caribbean voodoo practices, believe in one God, um, a distant God not involved with human affairs, and followers believe that God created intermediaries known as los misterios, um, and in English, the mysteries, who are divine beings that God works through. And kind of like, sounds like an, if you're taking the Christian vernacular, it would be like akin to angels. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. And then when I read a little bit further down, um, I saw that some of the Mysterios are not so good and they don't work for God, kind of like, again, back to that, Catholicism, like Lucifer fell from grace. And now those that the Mysterios that are not working for good um, are now working as demons. And that makes sense because, as you know, we can't have good without bad or light without dark, can we? Exactly. Exactly. So how do people... Can they tell, I mean, I know that, that, okay, telling the good from the bad, I mean, I guess, you know, because sometimes in in regular angels come down, they might be wearing a halo, but they might be got, you know, a couple of horns under that halo. Um, but it said that um, the mysterious are divided into 21 different groups, and the priests and priestesses call upon them um, 
and work with specific core groups of Mysterios according to particular needs, which would be like me um, with mine calling, you know, on certain gods and goddesses for for whatever I need. Um, So, like on my path while I'm a solitary witch, there are covens and there are priests and priestesses and we call upon gods and goddesses. Um, So, you know, it's basically a lot of similarity between your practices and mine in that respect. Um, But um, you go by, you do do ritual, uh, rituals to work with these core groups or, or, and you have a lot of the different groups, um, well, in the table of contents, you talk about a lot of them. But how does one, all right, suppose somebody, I'll go, I'll cut to the chase. Suppose um, somebody's interested in learning your path. Where do they start? So in our path, you start by finding yourself a mentor, a god, what we call a god parent, who is your teacher and your guide in the physical plane in dealing with the spiritual realm. And then upon finding your teacher, your teacher is going to have a consultation with the mysterios or the mysteries to find out which mysteries are with you. So there's different groups and each group has their different specialties. However, we say all, all spirits can do pretty much all types of things. So, for example, kind of like linking it to, you know, witchcraft, you know, Loki is a god of chaos. Mm-hmm. But as a god of chaos, he can still make perfect order. Mm-hmm. Okay, order through chaos. Right. So, so... All of our mysteries are just like that, but we say that each individual is born with certain ones with them. Those are the mysteries that are with you, and those mysteries with you are the ones that you would end up working with to help you, you know, along your path. Mm -hmm. So you end up creating relationships with those specific mysteries that Mm -hmm. what we say are born with you. Mm -hmm. So like spirit guides or guardian angel kind of thing, right? Sort of, yeah. yeah, sort of a little bit different in the sense of how I try to equate it for people is that your mister, your mysterios are your the equivalent of your spiritual DNA, mm. right? Your spirit guides are usually chosen. There's mm. a, a link that of kind of like mutual choice. Right? Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. choose to work with the spirit guide, the spirit guide chooses to work with you. With the misterios, they're there whether or not you choose to work with them. Right? They're mm-hmm. part of you, part of your DNA, they're part of what makes you you. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, so you don't have to look too far, you just have to know they're there and, and seek them, in other words. Exactly, and develop yourself spiritually and your spiritual abilities and your spiritual gifts that God has given you in order for things to become revealed. So just as you were saying, like, well, how do you tell a good angel from a bad angel is that you don't analyze it with your physical eyes. Mm -hmm. The only way for you to tell such a thing is to analyze such things with your spiritual sight. And because anyone you know, can dress up really beautifully and be rotten in the core. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Um, another chat room question. She wants to know, um, do each of the 21 divisions work with a specific one of the Mysterios? So the 21 divisions themselves are the groups of the different Mysterios. So, okay. for example, like we have the division of fire or the division of Candelo. All the mysteries that deal with fire and that had that hot fire energy are part of that division. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, Now, okay, so in witchcraft, it's in the bloodline for many people. But there are people who have no such bloodline, but they feel that they're meant to follow their path anyway. In the book, you say that all brujos are born to be brujos, and there are signs that tell the mother that she may be pregnant with a child who has otherworldly powers. Um, and brujo is not 
a normal everyday individual. He's a magical being incarnated, um, which at times brings immense awe, love, and fear, I'm quoting you, um, to those around him. So some, what are some of the signs and characteristics that mark a brujo? Brujos often fall into trances with or without trying. So mm -hmm. inability to naturally fall into trances, oftentimes in youth, they tend to fall into a lot of trances. Another typical sign of brujos is de dealing with otherworldly activities that occur, such as like basically having interaction with the spiritual world, having visions, basically the manifestation of psychic powers mm -hmm. and the manifestation of psychic powers also via dreams. Another common sign is that Basically, if you're a brujo and you're not being a brujo that you're meant to be, your life is going to feel like it's cursed, mm. right? The way that this is, is that if you are a brujo and you are a magical being incarnate, that your life being a brujo will be blessed. But your life not being a brujo is like living a curse. You mm. will find lots of blockages. A lot of brujos end up dealing with a lot of like depression, anxiety, insomnia, illness, uh, strange, what I call ghost illnesses, which means illnesses that have no, nothing physical to pinpoint. A lot mm -hmm. of them will suffer really bad, bad illnesses with no solution until they find brujeria, where mm -hmm. they find their path and they start practicing that path and that's what solves them or resolves them. Um, a lot of them throughout their teenage years have lots of social problems with basically others within their peer group. They're different. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because, I mean, we all come into our own at certain ages. I mean, you know, some people know that they were born to be a brujo or a witch or, um, you know, but Sometimes in childhood, you kind of skip over that, and all of a sudden, you know, in your teen years, you go, oh, wait, no, I better I better figure this out now, because now I'm really interested. Before, it was, you know, Barbie dolls and whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's got to be hard for those who don't realize their potential and their path. Well, uh, the other thing here is, like, in this culture where you're based in a Protestant culture, Okay, mm -hmm. so maybe everyone is not Protestant anymore. However, the culture and the society still is very much Protestant, okay? Mm -hmm. and so if you're a brujo, right, mm -hmm. and you don't know you're a brujo, and your family doesn't even know what a brujo is, <laughs> okay? Uh -huh. They're not going to be able to be like, oh, I see what your problem is. You're a brujo. Let me go take you to another brujo and get you resolved and have you live well. Mm-hmm. You're just going to be like, oh, my life is kind of crappy and I don't know why. Wow. Right? And, you know, I, I just can't seem to have good relations with people and I don't know why. And if you're in a culture where you've never, where that culture doesn't expose you to such a thing, you're mm -hmm. going to end up kind of like possibly, and I've run into this tons of times lost and confused in your life dealing with all types of things and so another person you might even sound like a crazy person because some of the things happening to you probably don't make any sense in like the regular you know sense Mon of the world right yeah yeah and Mon so so they might not th they might either think you're losing it you know you have psychological issues you have mental problems all mm -hmm. of that and in the ancient times, right, prior to modern mental health, which mental health as it's dealt with now was only discovered in the 50s. Mm -hmm. So it's only about 70 years old that you have, like, psychologists and psychiatrists. Yeah. In the olden days and still in places like the DR, the psychologists and the psychiatrists and the people that deal with those are the brujos or the shamans that work with that <laughs> and resolve that for people. It's just scary that people could possibly live their whole life without being enlightened. Um, it, it, that would be like, you know, the universe kicking them in the butt. Like, 
for whatever karmic or whatever reason. I mean, that would be a horrible way to live. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, when you were young, were you told that you were a brujo or did you realize it on your own? I realized it really early on and I actually approached um, and asked, was I? And they started laughing at me and they're like, yeah. They're like, isn't that obvious? Right? <laughs> and they all thought that it was just like, like funny as hell. And <clears throat> they're like, that's why you're here. And um, yeah, so I realized it myself, but they all knew it and they all knew it even when my mother was pregnant. So yeah, that's they how were- it kind of worked out for me. And once I came forward and I was like, yeah, am I one of the, am I one of them and things of this nature? And they confirmed, then that's when actually my training process started. Mm-hmm. Well, you were lucky to come from a family like that. Um, you know, some people come from families that don't have a clue. I know witches who whose families don't believe there is such a thing or whatever. And, and, that's got to be tough because you can't really come out of the broom closet then to to be comfortable. You know what I mean? Um, I got lucky because it was in the bloodline. So I, I knew and it was fine and, and whatever. But, God, so many people are walking around not knowing where to go, who to turn to. And, you know, in, in these cases sometimes, like you said, they're afraid to talk to people because they're afraid people might think you're nuts. Yeah, definitely. Whereas the funny part is, in our tradition, basically the brujos are the kings and queens of the earth. That's what makes us different. You know, kings and queens were different than everyone else. That's what made them kings and queens. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, We're going to take a quick break. And um, when we come back, there's a whole lot more questions and probably not enough time (laughs) to get to them all because that's how it works. You know, they like to mess with us we give getting something really interesting and in, in a flash you know it's gone so anyway we will take a break so everybody go run up stretch out and we'll be back in two minutes don't go away there's more stirring the cauldron with marla brooks right after these important messages from haunted road media comes an exciting new novel by author marla brooks soul connection a deadly obsession Two lost souls ripped apart by murder in another century find each other again in the present only to discover that the murderer has followed them through time. Can their love save them or will history repeat itself? Find out in this captivating new novel by Marla Brooks, Soul Connection, A Deadly Obsession. Available now on Amazon.com and at BarnesandNoble.com. You've no doubt heard of Tango and Cash, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Perhaps it takes two to tango. Well, now, on the first and third Thursdays of each month, there's a show called Tango and Friends at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Para-X Radio Network with your host, Bruce Tango. And yes, there will be at least two to tango on each episode, sometimes even more. There's going to be lots of topics and lots of guests you'll all know and lots of surprises. Prizes. Tango and Friends, every first and third Thursday of the month at 8 p.m. right here on the Para-X Radio Network. Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening into Stirring the Cauldron. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up if you don't already know about the free weekly Witches Oracle Deck readings that I post on my website every Monday. Now let me answer the age-old question before you ask it, which is, well how do I know it's for me? And the answer is pretty simple. If you weren't meant to see it, you wouldn't know it was there. So if you're curious about what the week has in store for you, pop on over to MarlaBrooks.com every Monday and scroll down on the homepage, and there it will be. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Hey, welcome back, and my guest tonight is Hector Salva, and we're talking about his new book, The 21 Divisions, Mysteries and Magic of Dominican Voodoo. Now, i um, got a couple more Brujo questions for you here, because I, I, I found that really interesting. Um, what's the difference between an initiated 
brujo and an uninitiated brujo? So an initiated brujo has a lineage and that means both have lineages actually, but what happens is in some lineages they don't connect conduct initiation and and they only go via apprenticeship versus other lineages are a combination of initiation and apprenticeship initiation rituals help to create the physical bond between the spiritual forces and the material world the uninitiated brujo simply basically cannot do such rituals because it's not a part of their lineages and that versus going through ritual in order to help create that bond there are certain other training practices that they may do which may take you know somewhat longer to achieve that same result mm, okay and I want to talk um, just a little bit about some of the tools of the brujo like cigars and panuelos, and especially the sacred vessel. So, for the brujo, the brujo is the most important tool, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. So, first and foremost, like, a well-developed brujo needs pretty much just himself. However, in our tradition, there's basically, outside of the brujo and his power, the development of his power, there's two main things that you find everywhere. The first is the pañuelos. The pañuelos are cl sacred cloth which are dedicated to the various misterios. The reason why they, this is used is because when the mysteries come into people's body and they use the brujo through the vehicle of mounting or possession, the brujo and people in the crowd, they don't know who that spirit is until it identifies itself. Once it identifies itself, we put place certain colors of these cloths, their sacred cloths are on them, and anyone who sees them knows, oh, it's this mystery, or it's that mystery, or it's this mystery. So that's one part of the use of the cloth. The second part is that there's they're used in lots of secret rituals and secret uh, work in order to do different varying magical procedures with the mysteries. Mm -hmm. The second thing is the sacred vessel. The sacred vessel serves to call down or draw down the forces of the mysteries. And it acts as an exterior vessel to that which the brujo naturally is. His body is the interior vessel, right? Mm -hmm. And so with that sacred vessel, he's able to move and manipulate the various universal forces which the mysteries are connected with in order to create magic and healing. Alongside of that, many brujos use the magic and power of cigars. Cigars tap into the power of the spirit of tobacco. And tobacco, we say that every living plant has a spirit, but mm -hmm. tobacco has been held sacred all over in shamanic traditions for a reason, and that's because it has a very powerful spirit within it that when you can work with it properly, it can actually kind of uh, be a tool to work with other forces and move energies around and about. Not all brujos smoke cigars or tobacco, but many of them do. Mm -hmm. I've seen that in other um, voodoo paths, too. Cigars um, are pretty prominent in, in those. So it was just kind of interesting. You know, you have the panuelos, and then you have the cigars, and, and the sacred vessel, of course, is, is really, really important. Um, got another chat room question. They want to know if you perform spells or, you know, read cards or call upon deities. Well, we kind of did the deity thing with the Mysterios, but, um, yeah, do spell work and, and card reading. And, well, you're a psychic medium, so, yeah, you do that too. Um, but in general, what, how does that all come together? Yeah, so we do spell work. We do magical work. We do healing work. 
Um, but yes, we do spell work and we do magical work. Um, number two, yes, we do readings. There's people who read cards, people who read glasses of water, seashells, puddles of oil, cigars, of course, you know, tobacco, mm-hmm. um, coffee, tea leaves, coffee readings, dream interpretation, all of that happens. And lastly, of course, yes, we do the basically what we call possession or mounting. Mounting is the word we often use. And that the spirit of the individual is pushed out of the body. And the spirit of the mystery comes and takes over that body. So our mounting is somewhat different than channeling. In channeling, often there's a shared space. Mm -hmm. As in mounting, the person is unconscious, right? The person Mm -hmm. has no consciousness of the events. And in fact, that's the most uh, important part of our work because it's, it's where basically the spirits come through and just through them, coming through they can prophesize heal and do all types of spell work magical work whatever with simple little things such as like snapping the fingers or you know to give you an example i had one time here someone who needed help for like they just couldn't get any clients into their business their business was in the red Mm -hmm. right and no matter what they did it just wasn't working for them so they came here for help and we called one of the mysteries that I work with here known as Anaisa she came in mounting possession and her magical work was basically taking a cigarette and blowing three puffs of smoke and she was like yeah you'll have business and within three or four days he he ended up with three major contracts that won him over $200,000 worth of contract work where his business had had zero work in the past three years. So once the mysteries, their divine beings come through the body, they don't need much. They can just say things and that creates the magic instantaneously and gets things shifting and moving and changing. So they're calling down the Mysterios, um, knowing full well that they were going to, you know, the mounting was going to take place. Do, do the Mysterios ever sometimes feel the need to come down and mount um, uninvited? Okay. Not, hmm? Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, another little story, again, with Anaisa, because remember, like, we all have, like, our group of spirits that we mainly work with. Mm-hmm. There was a time where I was outside of the country, And I had a major injury to my foot. Mm -hmm. But I had other things to do. And all spiritual workers, witches, all of us, we're all good for this, okay? Which is basically, a lot of times, we're kind of, like, rough on ourselves. We do way too much, okay? Mm -hmm. We we don't like to give ourselves breaks. And we don't give ourselves enough Mm self-care. So, just like nurses and doctors, you know? So... (laughs) We're good for that. So I had a lot of things to do, but I had to walk, right? And my Anaisa saw that I was in so much pain walking that she just took over my body because I needed to walk basically about another two miles in order to get where I was going. Mm. And she took over my body so that I would be unconscious of all of the events. And the pain, probably, huh? Yeah, so that I would be unconscious. I wouldn't feel the pain. I didn't have any pain because I'm not present in my body. And so what makes you there is your spirit. So I was kicked out of my body, and she came through. She walked with my with my uh, goddaughter who was with me, and she walked me down over to where we needed to go. And then all of a sudden, I wake up, and I'm in my location. And... That does happen. I've had other times where, like, the mystery might pop in through when I'm shopping because they want to buy something. I've actually had mysteries buy jewelry. So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 
know, they know what they like to do. That's why they're called mysteries, though, right? <laughs> yeah. So when this is interesting, I mean, so when they pop in and take over, do you feel anything? Do you know anything? Or just one minute you're walking down the street and the next minute you wake up and you're somewhere else? No, you you can you sense them coming and you can feel them pushing you out. Okay. And you do have a chance to kind of like reject the push Mm -hmm. or, you know, allow them to come through. So like in my walking situation, I was just too like drained out to fight, Mm -hmm. you know? So that was really just kind of like a quick, like a real strong takeover where in other cases there, there have been cases like in the store where they're like, you know, I want to come through and shop myself and if things are appropriate for them, I'll just be like, okay, you do your thing. Good for you, because it you sounds know? like they'll take what they can get, too. You know? I yeah. Mean, and yeah. there's other times where they will take over in cases where they kind of, but you will know that they're taking over when basically you're in danger, you know? Mm-hmm. They will take over. We've known people that, like, can't swim, mm-hmm. stranded out in sea. Who mm-hmm. mysteries have taken sea mysteries have taken over and swam them to shore. Mm. So yeah, I mean that it, it sounds like a, a guardian and and whatever. I mean, and that you don't have a choice, you know. But it's good to know that you they're there, even if you don't want them to be or or don't believe it. But at some point, I think they'll prove themselves that they're there for a good reason, right? Oh, definitely. And to tell you the truth. When you have misterios, you're never alone. So you're never lonely. Mm-hmm. So people have problems with feeling lonely. I've never felt lonely in my life, darling. Maybe mm-hmm. I could, maybe I could take a little break, but you know, to get some loneliness in somehow. Because <laughs> yeah, I've never had. You don't. You don't. You're not lonely because they're constantly around. Uh-huh. And you know they're there just like you know your dog is there or the right. other person in the room. It's not a question of whether or not they're there. It's like a question of maybe when they'll shut up. So <laughs> sometimes they can be very chatty Cathy's and talk, 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 talk a lot. And it might give you a lot of information that, you know, it is true, and but it might, might just really not matter. So they're awesome. You don't feel lonely. You're not by yourself. You have a constant sense of support. You know, I've been homeless before because in order for you to reach, you have to go through some suffering. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. can't have empathy. You can't have sympathy. You can't have understanding for people without trials and tribulations. And you can't earn your power without trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. We say every brujo earns his power through trials and tribulations. And I've had time where I was, you know, homeless, but I thought it was just great either way because I have my misterios. So Mm -hmm. I never felt alone. I didn't feel like, oh, my God, you know, the world is against me. I'm so by myself. I haven't had those experiences, thank God, in the Mysterios, because the Mysterios have always been there with me, and I mm-hmm. knew how to conquer whatever. And you know they're there for your best interest, so that, that helps. But I, one more question. When you, when you were taken over, um, when you were walking down the street with your foot, when the Mysterio to- took over, did your goddaughter realize that? Oh, yeah, because she, I'm a, she could feel, she sensed it coming. Okay. Right? Because she also has her misterios and she's developed. So she was like, yeah, I know that they're coming. I just don't know which (laughs) one it is quite yet, but I know somebody's on their way. Right Mm -hmm. away, she sensed when, like, they were pushing their way into my body. Mm -hmm. And when Anaisa was pushing her way into my body. And once Anaisa, like, took over, Anaisa, as a spirit, you'll definitely know that she's there. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. I mean, you know, somebody that didn't know, didn't have a Mysterio, you know, they might kind of think something was weird about you at that moment. But, um, you know, that was it was an interesting thought. You know, I could just see somebody going, oh, what happened to him? <laughs> you know, he, he just doesn't seem the same right now. 
somebody that didn't know any better. Um, you know, you wrote in the book, um, there was a really nice comment that your aunt said that I agree, and that is, a layman trying spiritual work is like a child playing doctor. And you go on to say that there are countless secrets that brujos have when it comes to working magic, and many that only the brujos have access to. Um, now, you know, in witchcraft, we we try to do that too, but in, in this day and age, seriously, anyone can pop onto the internet, find all kinds of spells for anything to try, which is, again, one of my pet peeves, and I'm not going there right now, because even the simplest spell can go wrong if somebody doesn't know what they're doing. So you guys are, are very much more secretive in many ways, yes? Oh, way more secretive in many ways. That's A. And B is... We have another saying that says it's not so much what you do, it's who does it. So <laughs> I like that. So what that means is, you know, like a lot of people can go and attempt a spell and nothing's going to happen. It's going to be like, Puh, mm -hmm. like right? And mm -hmm. you could have a, a brujo. Maybe they don't know they're a brujo yet, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're like unaware of that. Maybe they grew up in Protestant America. But then they go ahead and they light up the simplest little candle and then all kinds of stuff happens. And maybe it doesn't get the intended result because they're not trained and they don't know the secrets. But it taps mm -hmm. into their power. And suddenly things happen and shit changes and it manifests, right? Mm -hmm. So we say it's not so much about what's being done, but it's way more about who's doing it. Mm -hmm. you, in our tradition... You can go to a brujo, right, who, let's say, is not as well developed, right? Mm -hmm. And you may pay them a certain price, let's say $100, and they might do all sorts of work for you and all kinds of things. And you might go to another brujo who's very powerful and very well known for his work and very powerful, and you might pay them $10,000 and all they might do is blow some smoke on you, and you're going to get a very severe result. Mm hmm Yeah. It's so interesting how everything comes together, and, and everything comes together for a reason. And, and that's the interesting part. You know, there are things that you're supposed to know. There's things that people are not supposed to know, and, and we learn by doing or trying and getting, you know, smacked down a couple of times until we get it right. So what is the sacred truth? The sacred truth is the only truth. And so the sacred truth is that which never changes. And what I mean by that is that truth is what everyone is born here to reach. Mm -hmm. And whether you achieve it in one lifetime many lifetimes if you believe in reincarnation or whatever that is the purpose and the goal of every human spirit of every spirit mm -hmm. and for us a human is just a spirit incarnate mm -hmm. versus a disincarnated spirit meaning a spirit without a body right and to us how i was always taught by my madrina was that there's many ways to skin a cat because there's many ways that they, to get to the truth. Mm -hmm. So, however, once truth is reached, it's the same for everyone. It, you may not take the same streets to get there, but you will, once you do get there, the truth is the same across the board. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, now, in the book, you break down things into divisions, and, you know, we could do a whole show on that of, of itself, but you also have a chapter on getting started on the path for those who are interested. So, this is truly an all-inclusive book about all aspects of the, the Dominican voodoo, the magic, and the 21 divisions. Um, and it, it's just kind of amazing you crammed so many good things into, you know, that made sense and didn't carry on. And it wasn't like I always say this. It wasn't like reading a textbook. It was really interesting. And, um, uh, you know, bravo. I mean, did a good job of it because I, I, like I said in the beginning, I learned a lot. And I'm not going to kick and scream about it too much. So <laughs> it was it was good. 
But um, since we, we're kind of going to run out of time soon, I think um, people should be directed to your website. Um, where people can find out more about you and um, the information that might be, you know, that they might be looking for. So, so where would people go? So you can find me at hectorsalva.com. I also have over a dozen of other websites. So we have mysticalwork.com. We have las 21 divisiones.com. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. However, if you find me at hectorsalva.com, H-E-C-T-O-R-S-A-L-V-A, V -V as in victory, um, dot com, you'll be able to basically reach through that network everything else that I have available online. And... You can also check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, at Hungan Hector, H-O-U-N-G-A-N Hector, where you can find us pretty much everywhere. Pretty much if you type in Papa Hector, I'll pop up there. You know, you'll be able to Google Papa Hector, Voodoo. You'll be able to find me pretty much wherever you want. I'm been all, I've been online since 2000 providing spiritual work for people. And, of course, I want to thank the people at Wiser Books. You can find the book, The 21 Divisions, Mysteries and Magic of Dominican Voodoo, available everywhere books are sold. Thank you to Wiser Books for giving us, like, the platform and working with me and publishing this sacred work and all of that. It's been really awesome. They've really you know, made this an awesome experience and given mm-hmm. our tradition a voice. And, um, yeah, we're all over the place. Good. Now tell people on when they go to the website, like you have services, you have workshops, you have classes. Mm-hmm. Kind of da- dangle a little carrot about those right now. So, <laughs> so basically, if you find us at HectorSalva.com, I offer services, I offer consultations, so if you want to consult with me with a brujo, I also offer monthly community spiritual services towards different goals and different mysteries every month. I do workshops and events. At mysticalwork.com, I actually teach classes online um, to people all over the world. I have students and apprentices worldwide people in australia new zealand i actually have a temple set up in india Uh, students in india i have students all over the uk and europe as well as all over you know south america the caribbean the u.s and canada so we're all over we're like roaches i tell people you just can't get rid (laughs) of us okay we're we're kind of hard to get rid of and I offer classes, events, and workshops, and classes online at mysticalwork.com. And then I also do spell work and healing work for people. And you can find us at greatestspells.com. You know, I've been online doing this work online for over 20 years. So, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but to pat myself on the back, (laughs) I have know dozens upon dozens upon dozens of video testimonials hundreds of client submitted testimonials of the beauty of our spiritual work and that's really all thanks to god and the mysteries i'm just like the middleman you know and i've been blessed to be able to serve god and the mysteries and all of these beautiful people which my whole goal and mission for people is very simple I want you to be happy. I want you to find joy. I want you to find enlightenment in this lifetime, not in 10 lifetimes, not in five years not from your, now, not in three years from now. I mm-hmm. want to get you there now. And I want you to be able to enjoy and savor the flavor of life every single day and really find true happiness. That's my goal. Because the more happy people there are in the world, the less misery and the less misery people are imposing upon each other. Yes. Now, in 15 seconds, one more thing. Tell everybody about Salva's spiritual supply. 
So Salva Spiritual Supply, you can find all of our services. I make products. I make spiritual products for everything that you may need. And we also make custom products for anything that you may not have or see there. You can find Find us there. And you can find us there at greatestbells.com, greatestbells.net. Like I said, hectorsalva.com will take you in all those directions. Great. Well, I want to thank you for being a guest tonight because um, it was enlightening, it was interesting, and hopefully we can do it again down the line. Oh, definitely. Thank you very much, Marla, for having me here on your show, Stirring the Cauldron. It's really really been awesome and fun and i'd really love to do it again with you sometime good we will so i want let's thank everybody for listening in as well both live here tonight and podcasted and until next time everybody blessed be and merry meet again good night Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Please join us again next week at the same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited.